of today to hang out with you guys. And we have Instagram over here. We have YouTube up there. And I also share these lives on Facebook. So if you don't get to catch all of them, it's okay. Don't worry. I will post them on Facebook as well. Yeah. Hey, happy Saturday. I know. Whoa, what has happened here? I'm such a hot mess every day, but specifically today because I didn't iron my shirt because who's got time to iron their shirt on a Saturday? Not happening. <laughs> Not happening. We have so much boat stuff going on right now. We've had some major setbacks to our project. So we got to deal with that today instead of going for the amazing hike that I planned, which I'm kind of bummed about. Good morning, low carb mom. Hello, Rach, keto Latino. Hey, Nancy. Awesome. I'm so glad we're hanging out. It's so great to have internet and I can just like hang out with you guys whenever I want. It's awesome. Okay, so today I'm going to pin this in our Instagram here. Post, pin, pinning, done. We are going to be chatting about keto dinners and snacks and also beverages, but I ran out of room in the title. So the beverages is a bonus. If you guys have questions throughout our live, feel free to post them down below and I'll answer them as we go, or I'll wait until the end, depending on the question. So um, I did a live on Thursday talking about my favorite breakfasts and lunches. Um, so if you missed that, you can watch it on Facebook or YouTube. Um, and today we're going to be talking about all the dinners, why I choose specific recipes or um, directions or instructions rather, why I choose certain ingredients, what you can swap them out with, and just to give you some familiarity about how to adjust your keto recipes to suit your needs. So if you don't use coconut aminos or know what that is, don't go out and buy it. Just ask me how to replace it. There's always a replacement for an ingredient. Like 99% of the time, you can make a recipe with what you have on hand. Like seriously. Um, so today I'm going to be reading from and showing you pictures from my newest book, The Keto Diet Cookbook. If you're familiar, oh, this bad boy is my first book where I talk all about how to make keto work for you, macros, calculations, those sorts of things. And then this book is all about meal planning and recipes and ingredients and really how to make it work for your daily life. And then I have a third book coming out in June, June 18th, called Keto for Women. You can go to ketodietbook.com to view all of my books and get familiar with all the things I put out there and to pre-order Keto for Women because when you pre-order, you get entered to win one of three VIP memberships into my Happy Keto Body program, which is my 12-week video training program specifically for the keto lady. So if you go to ketoforwomen.com, you can enter to win over there. And it's just, I'm so happy that we can do that. Okay, so I'm going to show you my recipes and also... I think a couple of the recipes I'll be sharing today, um, you can use Perfect Keto products like their MCT oil powder to boost the fats. Um, so if you want to buy all the Perfect Keto things, you can use the coupon code COOKBOOK20 for 20% off Perfect Keto goodies. As long as they're full size, you get 20% off everything. Again, that's COOKBOOK20. Okay, there is another lady I saw... Uh, her books like yours not sure if it was by accident or she is trying to get your sales you know what it's sad like this happens a lot and there's really nothing i can do about it except hope that they find their own ideas sometime in the future and karma really isn't awesome so <laughs> karma can be an awesome thing but karma can not, also not be such an awesome thing so it happens, whatever. People copy people. It's okay. Uh, I'm so excited for Keto for Women, also 41 years old. So you're probably experiencing a little bit of premenopause, getting in there, feeling great about it <laughs> or not. Uh, I cover that a bunch in Keto for Women. Okay, let's get to these recipes because I could just chat with you guys all day and not get anything done. Mama of four year old twins, I'm starting into the perimenopause and noticing my hormones are honestly a mess and my weight loss is just as messy now. It's okay, you can do something about it. And if a doctor says, you're just getting old, there's nothing you can do, find another doctor. <laughs> that's crazy. So again, that's ketoforwomen.com. Okay, the first dinner I wanted to share with you guys today 
is this one pot porky kale. Super, super simple. So one of the main strategies I use in our kitchen that's super simple is I cook the meat in a frying pan because frying pans I find to be the easiest. It cooks meat really quick. I don't need to worry about oven stuff or heating up the house or anything to do with that or messing up a bunch of pots and pans, making all sorts of things. So what I do is I cook the meat mostly, like almost done. I put it on a plate and then I put all the vegetables in that same pan, cook them until they're just about cooked, add the meat back, cook it until it's heated again and you have a full meal. And that's what I did with the one pot porky kale. So you're only using one pan and you're only cleaning up one thing. Instead, like you could grill this and then you could saute this and then it's like, it just creates such a mess. So that's the one pot, pot porky kale. I used coconut oil. You could also use avocado oil or ghee and I've given you instructions on that or literally any oil. Like do live your truth, whatever you have. Paprika, salt, pepper, pork chops, onion, garlic, kale, Italian dressing, really good on this, and also some parsley. Now, on the side of this recipe, I say, if you don't wanna buy your Italian dressing, use this recipe I made for you. Head on back to page 94, I think, 94, and make it. Otherwise, go to the store and buy some. So that gives you some more options. I find a lot of recipes out there will say, use this dressing, and then it'll list all the dressing ingredients, and then you have these ingredients that are like so long and overwhelming and then like who wants to make that? So instead just buy your dressing or make your dressing and then you have all this dressing and you can just add to every recipe. There was a question that I missed here. I just found your book at Costco in Canada last week and have tagged so many recipes already. Everything looks amazing. Yes, this book is in Costco Canada. I don't know how many they ordered, but if you're in Canada and you're thinking about getting the book, Go to Costco this weekend and pick it up because when they run out, they usually just run out and they don't reorder until the following quarter. So now's your time. Okay, so that's one pot porky kale and kind of the strategy behind that. And then we have uh, these creamy spinach zucchini boats. Yum. And you're probably thinking like, hey, this looks like breadcrumbs, Leanne. What's going on here, girl? You doubt me. You doubt me. Um, they're crushed pork rinds. Seriously, you need to get behind the whole crushed pork rinds in place of breading. You're welcome. Do it. <laughs> I always have an open bag in our fridge. In fact, I just transferred them over to like a little um, ru Rubbermaid container and I just keep the crushed pork rinds in there. I put it, I put it in the fridge and I keep them there and I use it on everything. A question, will the new book be in Costco Canada? It's only in Costco Canada. Well, let me repeat that. Costco Canada is the only Costco that's carrying the book. So Costco US isn't carrying the book, but you can get this book like literally anywhere. Target, Walmart, Barnes and Noble in Canada, Chapters, Indigo, Costco. Yes. On Amazon, just everywhere. Um, so with the breadcrumbs, Red crumbs. I just use crushed up pork rinds. So with this recipe, what I did is I took the zucchinis, I spooned out all of the all the insides, and then filled it with coconut cream, mayonnaise, collagen. If you want to, if you have it, use it. If you don't, don't. That's why it's optional. Um, and onion powder, garlic powder, salt, paprika, red pepper flakes, spinach. That's it. So. This recipe still has 32 grams of protein. So you're thinking like, what about like the actual animal protein? The pork rinds add a lot of protein to it and I added collagen to the creaminess in the middle um, just to boost the protein as well. And yes, there was a question, is this the new book? This is the new book. It is available in Costco Canada, Indigo Chapters in Canada, all little bookstores also in Canada. And then in the US it's available in all major bookstores. You also have Target, Walmart, Amazon, but it is not in Costco US. I hope that clarified it. Yeah. So that's kind of the strategy that I use for that. Now, if you want to go a step above, because each serving is, let's see, 32 grams of fat, maybe that's not enough fat for you. And you like dairy, put some cheese on it. And I explain how to do that in this paragraph right there. So if you have dairy on your ketogenic protocol, and you were upset that, put this down, you were upset that oh, this guy 
didn't use dairy. In my second newest book, out last week-ish, um, I included instructions on how to add dairy if there's dairy in your life. So you can add cheese to that. And if you are dairy-free and you enjoy dairy-free cheese, I've also included instructions and um, recipes even to make your own if you don't want to buy it. So those are my two strategies, really thinking of cook your meat in a pan and then take it out, put it on a plate, cook your vegetables, then put the meat back, heat it up, and you're done, and that's one pot. You could also do this in your Instant Pot. You could also do it in the oven if you wanted by cooking the meat, add the vegetables, let it sit for another five minutes in the oven, then take it out and you're ready to go. I just don't like a lot of steps. And when I wrote this book, guys, I did it in our boat. Our galley is very small, and I didn't have space. Like, our, our sink is literally this big. Like, it can't even hold a pot. So I had to be very, very wise with what I used, what I didn't, and I think that translates really well with the recipes, you're not spending a lot of time or wasting a lot of things and getting everything dirty because that drives me crazy. Okay. Ooh, okay. This is such a simple, simple, simple thing, but you will really enjoy it, I promise. Uh, Primal Voyage asks, am I going to KetoCon? I am not going to KetoCon this year. The reason I'm doing all of these little virtual events for the book is I'm actually not going on a book tour. Everything with Keto for Women, my newest book coming out, and all the travel and the work and all the things and the adjustments we've made to Healthful Pursuit over the last couple of weeks, I'm just really busy. And so I thought it would be so much more nourishing for all of us to connect online like this, as opposed to me going to individual events this time. Um, okay, so this is one of my favorite snacks. This is in the Savory Snacks chapter in the Keto Diet Cookbook. Any guesses on what this is? So simple, guys. Okay, so this is an iceberg lettuce. So you get the lettuce head, the whole head, and you cut it into these little pyramid things, and you dip it in your favorite sauce. And, okay, so you might be thinking, like, Leanne, this is just, like, a deconstructed salad. What's wrong with you? It's so much more fulfilling to, like, dip things in things than it is just eat a boring salad. I promise you, it's so fun. Kids love it because they're dipping vegetables and things and it's all peeling off and they're all little bits right here and iceberg holds up pretty well. So you should be able to just hold this, dip it, keep eating it, dip it. It's just a fun new way of looking at salad. One of my favorite snacks. I enjoy it. Now, really, there's two ingredients to this recipe and it's iceberg lettuce and ranch dressing. You can make your own or you can buy it. And so... In this little box right here, I explain what recipe I use to make my own. And you can go to page 76, make your own ranch dressing or not. And there is a vegan version um, and a non-vegan version or egg free, I should say. Okay, so that's one of the snack recipes. And then I have another savory snack idea. And that is tapenade. If you haven't had tapenade, you gotta get, you gotta get in on this party. You have to make it. If you're an olive lover like me, the time is now. Do it. <laughs> it's so simple. It doesn't cost a lot of money. And you can really use any olive that you want. But in this recipe, I used black olives, green olives, sun-dried tomatoes, and oil. You can get, actually, Prime has a really great deal on sun-dried tomatoes and oil. It's a little container like this. I think I bought mine for $1.99 each. And they come in the oil. And then I also used basil leaves, capers, parsley, thyme, oregano, garlic, anchovy, for sure, as many as you want, um, olive oil, and celery sticks. You could also use zucchini sticks, um, cucumber sticks, carrot sticks, whatever you'd like. And this not only makes a good like dip, it also makes an awesome spread. So if you've made some like low-carb keto bread or you have some leftover chicken, Put this stuff on there and eat it with cold chicken. Really good. Tapenade, you're welcome. It's so good. Um, now, if you don't, oh, so you know how recipes call for like one anchovy filet and then you're left with like eight others and you're like, what am I going to do with all these anchovies? My favorite is sauteing zucchini noodles, spiral sliced a zucchini in coconut oil with garlic, anchovies, capers, and finely chopped red bell pepper. After cooking for five minutes, add fresh parsley and voila. So if there are recipes where I've called for like one thing and you're left with a whole bunch of other stuff and you're like, what do I do with it? 
in the little instructions here, like the head note, they call it, I've included instructions of what to do with your leftover anchovies because that is the worst. They end up sitting in your fridge and then you throw them out because you couldn't make that much tapenade in, in, in that short a period of time. Okay, now we get to the most exciting part probably of the whole book. I, I love this recipe. I make it all the time. It's super simple. Are you ready? Salami chips. Yep. Mm -hmm. They're chips made with salami. Really simple. You just take salami and bake it, turns into chips. So that's really all you need to do for this recipe. But if you want to go a step above, this is a buffalo chicken dip that I love, love to serve with a salami. And I've included instructions on how to do that, including you got to use full fat coconut milk. In the front of the book, I tell you that if you don't like full fat coconut milk, you can use cream and I show you how to replace it. You need cooked chicken, some nutritional yeast, coconut aminos or soy sauce, hot sauce, onion powder, garlic powder, turmeric, sea salt, black pepper, and some parsley if you want to make it look fancy. So those are salami chips. You need to make these. They're so tasty. Okay. Now we get into uh, sweet snacks. So oftentimes on your ketogenic diet, you're not going to be making a lot of like fancy desserts because you're a normal person. <laughs> and so I wanted to make the sweet section of the book more snacks than fancy desserts. Because when we're on the ketogenic diet, we, we usually don't crave a lot of sweet things. And when we do, it's like we've just had dinner and we're like, oh my gosh, I just need like a sweet little something. Not like I feel like spending three hours making a carrot cake tonight. No, that's silly. I did include a couple of fancy things, like if you have friends over or you're having a dinner party and you wanna make something nice, like the macadamia crack bars are really good for that, or I think I'm gonna be sharing the brownie, yeah, I'm gonna be sharing the brownie cake with you. These are all pretty recipes, but they don't take a long time. Um, okay, so if you're in a rush and you just need something awesome, like a fat bomb, these jelly cups, are great. Really, you can use your favorite nut or seed butter. You can use coconut oil, ghee, cacao butter. I don't care. Any fat that gets hard when it's in the fridge. Um, and then you mix that up. Then you put a little bit of fresh raspberry in with some erythritol and gelatin. You let that jelly get all jelly, roll it up, put it in the base of those, cover it up with some nut butter. And now you have like PB and J. If you can do peanuts, do it. Um, so I explain how to adjust with different nuts or seed butters, how to make it. And if you don't have fancy molds, don't stress. Seriously, it's okay. You don't need to buy them. Just get any silicone baking sheet and you can do this in a baking sheet so that you can use it in various other things. Hmm. Um, Tiny Keto Eat says, that's the first recipe that I made from the book. It was delicious. I think that was in regards to the salami chips. I know, right? Kevin is always begging me to make those chips. And then Believer for Life says, you look great, Leanne. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. I am not wearing makeup. I've kind of given up on the whole makeup thing. I ain't got time for that. Okay, brownie cake. Now, I'm going to show you this. <laughs> So this was one of the recipes that I had to rent a house because we don't have an oven. I had to rent a house and then make a couple of recipes uh, with an oven. And um, I made it three times because I was just trying to get the consistency just right. But the first try and the second try were still like very good. So every morning before I cooked for the day, I would have this for breakfast with a cup of almond milk or coconut milk or both and just like chow down on this cake. It is so good. So the sauce for it is liquid at room temperature sort of, well, is liquid when you make it because it's made from, I can't even remember. Oh yeah, it's just made with coconut oil, ghee, cacao butter, whatever you'd like, mixed with a little bit of erythritol and um, cacao powder or cocoa powder. So it's liquid when you make it and you can just like drizzle it on and perfect. Or when you put it in the fridge, it hardens. And when you take it out, it's like this fudgy consistency. Okay. So if you have friends that are like, keto is so stupid. How could you ever do that? Serve this. Serve it. Yeah. Um, let's see. Felicia said, Felicia, sorry. I could live on the fat bomb tea latte. Is that good? 
uh, to use for intermittent fasting? Um, intermittent fasting, there's two real goals to intermittent fasting. One is insulin, um, insulin resistance. No, you don't have that goal. Uh, insulin regulation. And the other one is autophagy. So with insulin regulation, you can get away with putting fats in your coffee, having some bone broth for your fast, because really you just want to regulate your insulin and those things shouldn't push it over the edge. But then you have autophagy, which really responds to having uh, Earl Grey tea, which has bergamot oil, which is going to help increase your autophagy, which is really the cellular, the turnover of cells. Think of it as like cleansing your cells in a way. Um, so there you just want to have water, Earl Grey tea, water, water. So if you're just trying to regulate your insulin, you should be able to do like a fat bomb tea latte sort of thing. And as long as your blood sugar is maintaining stability, you're good to go. Uh, how often do you eat sweets? I'm just starting keto and don't know. When I first started keto, I was having like a sweet fat bomb every night, like every night. But, you know, being five years into it, I don't really crave sweets like I used to. So maybe, actually, I'll show you this if I can find it in the book because I do outline this in the book. Um, let's see if I can find it. I really got to tag this page because I'm always talking about it. I got to remember this, page 24. So on page 24 of the book, if you're still experiencing a cycle, you can follow those these little macro outlines that tell you, and I'll turn it back around so I can explain it properly. And you're, okay, so on cycle days 17 to 28, so this is directly after ovulation to the, to the day before you start your period, that's probably when you're gonna wanna crave more sweets where you want more sweet things. Um, and that's usually where all those sweet things kinda come into play. Um, okay, so we talked about the brownie cake, it's amazing, and then, the last one I want to share with you, which is sort of like on the sweet side, but also a great beverage and inspired by my one of my favorite shows, Billions. If you've never watched it, you must. This is Chuck Rhodes' favorite drink, an egg cream. And normally an egg cream has like a ton of sugar in it. It's really, really sweet. And there's no actual egg in it, <laughs> which I was surprised. He was talking so much about egg creams in the last season. And I was like, what is this egg cream thing all about? So I did a quick Google search and found it out and then went directly to the, to the fridge, got out all the ingredients and started making it. And oh my gosh, these are so good. It's, it's almost like a keto fizz. If you're familiar with my keto fizz recipe, let me see if I can find it in here, um, which is, yeah, here. It's similar to a keto fizz. Delicious. This tastes like um like a root beer float do you remember like my parents used to make us root beer floats all the time and then i got obsessed with making them with not only root beer but like crush and pepsi pepsi was really big <laughs> so this is basically just fizzy any sort of fizzy thing i lose i use la Creux, um or bubbly or whatever i can find uh with some full fat coconut milk if you don't do coconut milk you could use cream if that's fine but with this it's milk so any sort of milk that you want cacao powder or cocoa powder erythritol and sparkling water and it just makes this awesome chocolatey chocolate amazingness it's just it's so tasty it tastes like a float with chocolate it's just good you're welcome um so those those are some of my favorite recipes from the book I make them often. They've been in our house for a couple of years. And when I was planning on writing this book, I was like, those recipes need to be in there. Those strategies need to be shared because they're so simple. And I have a feeling like 99.9% of the people that will buy the book will appreciate how easy all this stuff is. And really guys, it's, I think cookbooks are really, really great, but we need to see them for what they are. And that's trying to teach you new strategies, new recipes, and just um, new ways of looking at food. And so I really encourage you, if you do pick up this book, go through a bunch of recipes and see just how easy it is to prepare your own meals. And in the front, I show you how to plan out your meals using a strategy that's not really talked about on keto. And that's more of like a small, medium, large, huge strategy where you assign a rating to each recipe. And then you say like, if my goal is 1300 calories a day, I'm gonna have a small, a medium, and a large recipe. And so when I go through the book, this guy 
is a medium recipe and it says so right here on the side. And this guy oh, is a large recipe and it says so right there. And then, oops, I just missed a small. And these chili lime bowls are a small and it says so right there. So you can really have fun with this and really get a handle on what you're eating, how to prepare food, how to portion things properly without like sitting with your phone and being like, boop, boop, beep, boop, boop, trying to figure out how many calories this is because it doesn't need to be overly complicated. As long as you're eating high fat, low carb, I, I promise you, it doesn't need to be as complicated as what we're, we're being told it is. <laughs> so I get really jazzed up about this stuff because like out of, Okay, honesty time out of this book. Oh God, this book is so heavy. And this book, I love my first book for all of the front matter and just the details that you can get from this and just, you know, how much do nuts cost and how do you weigh those out with a low carb and things. But I don't love, love the recipes in here. They're a little bit more complicated. Um, they call for ingredients that you may not be able to find in your area. And although it has awesome front matter, like I would buy this book if I didn't already own it and it wasn't mine. Um, I would buy this book just for the front matter because that's how thick it is. Now this is my first book, came out in 2017 and all the information is still relevant. But these recipes in here, like they're awesome. They're awesome and I'm a pretty, like I will tell you, if, you know, if there's something that I don't like about it or anything, like I love every single recipe in here. Like there's not one where I was like, eh, I guess I'll just put it in there or I don't think people are gonna like this. So I'm really, really proud of the recipes in this guy. So I'm seeing that a couple of you guys are gonna planning to buy this book. Thank you so, so, so much. Um, there are a bunch of copies in Canada at Chapters, Indigo, Costco, any small bookstore, there'll be books there too. Uh, and then in the US, uh, you're gonna find it at Barnes and Noble, Target, Walmart, any bookstores there. If they don't carry it, then just ask them to carry it or ask them to order you one. And across the whole globe, you can go on Amazon or any online book retailer and look for this bad boy right here. And if you already have a copy, please, 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 please go to ketodietbook.com slash review and leave a review. It can be a really bad review. It can be a really good review. It can be any kind of review that you want. It's just reviewing the book really helps me. And it would just be really, really great if you could do that. Like it, it really, really helps. That way bookstores take me seriously. They order more of the books. They see that people are wanting the books, that they like the books. Even if it's a bad review, it tells me what I need to change for next time. Um, there was a question, what is the second book called? I have the first one. It's called The Keto Diet Cookbook. And this guy's called The Keto Diet. So The Keto Diet, The Keto Diet Cookbook. And if you're totally confused and you can't figure out where it is, just search with my name, Leanne Vogel. Little tidbit, Vogel means bird. There you go, bet you didn't know that. Or maybe you did. Um, I eat your cinnamon bun muffins almost every single day. I love that recipe. I'm definitely getting it. I didn't see it in my Barnes and Noble last night, but I'm going to look around again to, uh, around town tonight. I prefer local, but there's always Amazon, heh. Um, yeah, ask them, because a lot of the times they can be hidden in places, and I've gone to a lot of Barnes and Nobles and they all have them, but sometimes they're like still in boxes in the back because it just came out. So just ask somebody. Uh, the creamy pesto chicken was awesome and I'm eating it. a meat bagel right now. Oh, the tapenade and the chimichurri on the meat bagel. Ah, so good. Uh, found mine at Costco, that's awesome. Your muffins are the best ones I have made thus far. Uh, morning from our first camping trip of the season. Oh, that's so exciting. I miss camping so much. Do you use monk fruit sweetener in the new book? I think it's the best, okay. Here's what I think about sweeteners, totally up to you. So um, I didn't I didn't really outline what sweetener, like any cookbook that you get, please, 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 please look at the front matter because most authors will give you whoops, instructions on the ingredients that they chose and how to replace them with what you have. That's like the sign of a good book. So 
please go through that in mine. I talk about how to replace things with butter, ghee, how to replace nutritional yeast, coconut cream, coconut milk, full fat coconut milk, light coconut milk. Like I give you all the outlines, how to use dairy, how to use not dairy, how to use store-bought dressings versus um, homemade dressings, how to use coconut oil instead of butter, whether or not you should use butter flavor. Like seriously, every ingredient is outlined and how to replace it. Soy sauce versus coconut aminos, how to use it. Um, so go through there and I promise you the answer is all here, specifically with sweeteners, erythritol, stevia, monk fruit, everything. I, I paneled you guys and you said that you all preferred um, erythritol over anything else, erythritol and stevia. So that's what I called for interchangeably throughout the recipes, whether it was drops of stevia or like measured out erythritol. Um, but uh, you can use monk fruit one-to-one, -one, it's fine. I made the shredded mojo pork and avocado salad the other day. I paired it with the prosciutto biscuits. My friends and I love both recipes. I love those prosciutto biscuits. Once you put mayonnaise in a biscuit, you'll never go back, I promise. Yeah, okay, well, thanks so much for hanging out with me, guys. We have a ton of boat stuff to do, so I better get going. I could chat with you all day. So again, if you're like, I want this book right now, you can go to ketodietbook.com, look at options of where to buy it, and or go to Amazon and pick up a copy. And if you haven't already reviewed the book, go to um, ketodietbook.com slash review. And if you missed at the beginning, Perfect Keto put together a little coupon code for these virtual events. You can use the coupon code COOKBOOK20 for 20% off all full-size Perfect Keto items. Okay, thanks so much for hanging out with me, and I hope you guys have a great Easter weekend if you're celebrating, and if not, just have a great time with family, and I will see you guys next week. Bye. Bye, guys.